because, because I'm already very hungry, so this will not be long. <laughs> so we know a lot of optimization problems, so find the max, find the mean, whatever, right? So we always see something like that. Uh, but uh, maybe, so we know Danzig has the simplex algorithm. So as long as you have an LP for your problem, somehow your, your problem is solved, right? But is that really true? So the question is, what? The Danzig, uh, the inventor of simplex method. So, but the question is, is that really true? So, finding optimal solution to the LP or to any formulation solves the problem. Is that really true? Maybe. Let's see the original story of himself. Okay, that's his own story. So, uh, because he invented this method in 1940s, right? That even that time in the United States, people are not very rich, right? So we need to consider to minimize the cost. For, for, for eating, right, for food. So, okay, now can, may, if you have never heard of this story, maybe you can try to guess what's the result of KCLP. What's the minimum cost debt? Can you guess what? What, what? Price? Rice? rice? Only rice? But you don't have, if you don't have enough protein, right? Uh, no. <laughs> Everybody is hungry. <laughs> Maybe you are thinking, what do you want to eat? But the, the truth, <laughs> also, this, this is not joking. This is the original story. You can, you can, you can check from his own 500 gallons, that about 2,000 liters. So nobody can do that. It's impractical. <laughs> so he knows that, right? Then what he do is, okay, so get this out. So add a, basically add another constraint. So you can you guess what's the next? Oil. <laughs> Oil basically has very simple nutrition, I think. It's, it basically, basically, you have to be some combination of nutrition. So oil, for sure, doesn't work because it, it has no vitamin, right? You need a vitamin, you need a protein, and you need... So the, after that, 200 million cubes. This now maybe makes sense. You can do that. But, but, but you would rather kill yourself after seven days. So the, the, the issue is for any formulation, the trouble is there are always something misformulated or something wrong. So you use the word of George Box. So those are very famous. All models are wrong, but some useful. OK? So that's the motivation of studying enumeration problems. We are not looking just for one optimal solution. We enumerate all the minimal solutions or maximum solutions. OK? So that's somehow like Maybe some of the solutions are useful, okay? But this time we need to be a little careful about the runtime of such an algorithm. For example, this is a simple graph, very simple, right? Each component is just an edge. So this graph has this number of independent set, 2 to the power of n over 2. That's very clear, right? So if you want to such enumerate the maximum, maximum independent side, it has to be, it cannot be smaller than this. We are studying enumeration, not counting. It's just, you are not just output a number. You need to output all the solutions. So in other words, your runtime cannot be smaller than the number of solutions. Okay? So you have to print two by, by one. So this, you have to use this kind of time, right? So, but we know we can do that in this time easily, right? So basically, if you only consider the, uh, the simple way of counting an uh, algorithm. They, they, so you have nothing to do, you just do that. Uh, two to the power n over two. That's not interesting. But we also have some graph like this. This is big, but it has essentially has only two maximum independent set. Okay, if you use two to the power n over two of a single graph, then you, nobody will, will, will agree that everything is good. Right? So actually this has only two solutions. So the idea is this it's kind of like parameterized algorithm. You have more than one variable for the complexity. You, you can't input and output. So the running time is depends on both input and output size, okay? So again, if everyone knows, if you want some complexity classes, that's defined by them, right? Especially Papadimitri and Yanakakis. So, <laughs> Greek people. <laughs> huh? <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> all from now from the same university, Columbia. So this the same style picture, right? Papadimitri has moved there 
recently, right? So yeah, that's nice. So the the, the one smart activity to find these three classes, especially the first one. Oh, sorry, this, the last one. The first one is just very simple. So the running time is polynomial on the input size and output size. That's quite natural, right? But you can do a little bit better. Maybe this one is incremental polynomial. That is when you input the number of solutions. The running time of the, so the first solution needs to be polynomial on the input size. The second one is polynomial on the input size and one and then. So it may be slower and slower. Okay, so, but the, for each new solution, the running time is on n and i. Okay, so if it, this is a subset of polynomial total, right? So for sure. And uh, the last one is uh, the best somehow. So for each, uh, for each solution, you use only polynomial time. And so the total is just uh, linear on big n and polynomial n. So that's the best case. Uh, we also define something but nice below that. So the problem we are going to study is to enumerate maximum induced subgraphs. Okay, for some particular hereditary graph class P. Okay, for example, the most widely studied is this the problem studied by that three guys and the colleagues. They are equivalent. We know that, right? You, you don't care about the uh, n one factor n. So that clique somehow can be reduced to enumerate cliques. And this one is very, very different to, to that three. And maybe I can have time to discuss why this is very, very different. <clears throat> okay, so we have some, this problem is generally a special case, kind of special case of this problem. Uh, Benjamin had some study of counting this kind of things, right? But now we are different, we enumerate it. So. Uh, this has another very equivalent, but maybe where I don't have time to explain why they're equivalent. So this learning of Boolean functions. This one is quite obvious because for any graph class, you take uh, for graph G, you can take all the forbidden induced subgraphs, minimal, right? And that's basically make a set system or help graph. So if you find a solution, you need to hit each of those forbidden graphs. So that's your enumerated minimum hitting site. So this one is also equivalent. Can they be done? No, polytotal. These are very, very big open problems for 40 years. Um, and uh, yeah, 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 well, yeah. Uh, but if you can do polytotal, it's okay. Also, this problem has a decision version. So the same question is, is that a decision version polynomial? Okay, well, because of the time, we are not going to do that. So a very, very interesting work about the indu maximum induced subgraph was done by Cohen. And uh, maybe this three guys all from database area, maybe so. <laughs> so we are not that familiar with that. But they, they show something like this. So they, they, they define a very strange version. This version looks strange, but we will see that's where it's actually very natural for this kind of problems, because we are going to, we now we use some recursive algorithm, this will appear. Okay, so we show if the problem can be solved in polynomial total time, if and only if the special, the simple version can be done. Similarly, if this can be incremental polynomial time, if and only if this can be done, can be done. And finally, this one is not if and only if. So if this version can be solved in polynomial time, then the general problem can be solved in polynomial delay. This time, this is not if and only if. So, uh, our first result, just like uh, mentioned, uh, so for the hypergraph uh, traversal problem, so it is going to be done in polynomial delay uh, total if and only if it can be incremental polynomial. But that does not directly translate to our case because our case is harder. Because for our problem, our graphs, we're going to think this way. If you have a graph G, the n vertices, but the forbidden graph, maybe you have an exponential number of forbidden graphs. So the input size is larger. When the input size is larger, the problem is easier. The way, so our problem is harder. So that result does not imply this, but this result implies that. So hypergraph can be done in incremental polynomial if and only if it can be solved this time. So our result imply that one, but not the other way. 
so this is the simple proof. I maybe okay. I can briefly explain that. Suppose now the so one way is trivial, right? Because uh, polytotal include uh, conclude contains increment and polynomial. So now we want to show if you can do in polytotal, then you can do in incremental poly. Right? That's what we wanted to show. Now suppose the problem can be done in polytotal. Suppose you have such an algorithm that can solve the problem in polytotal. That's polytotal. Okay. So now we wanted to find the so basically we wanted to find the next solution in the so let's S B the set of solutions we already found. Okay. Now we want to find the next one. So the time we are allowed to use is primarily on the size of S and N, not big N. We're not going to use big N, right? So the idea is this: we call A, but we do not allow it to finish. We terminate it as this number of steps. Okay, so maybe it's just output nothing, but it doesn't matter. So I, I, I terminate you after this time. So if it finishes, then we're very happy, right? Either we know there's no more solution, or we find all the solutions, we're very, very happy. Otherwise, what we do is this: we try to consider take out each vertex out. Okay, we see if this. So basically, we take one vertex out to see the remaining graph still has a large number of vertices. If it still have a large number, so maybe this does not finish, then we remove that vertex. So basically, we keep a smaller and smaller graph that still has more than S solutions. So as long as we have more than S solutions, we, we can still find the next solution in the remaining graph. Oh, one, one technical part that I, I didn't mention here is if you have for the if you have an induced subgraph that has this some particular number of solutions, then the original graph has more than that. Okay, so in other words, the easy solution of the subgraph can be extended towards solution of the original graph. So you can make it smaller and smaller. <clears throat> okay, so the 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 the, the whole point, the key point of the, pr the proof is the last part. So as long as we can do for this for all the voices, okay, finally, at this step we can just do apply A to G. Now we do not terminate, we let it finish. Because we know in this graph it cannot have more than this number of solutions. Because for each of this one, it has uh if it has more than big S solutions, then we remove it that way, right? So for each we remaining in G prime. It has less than big uh, S solution, and for each no solution containing all the vertices, so it, it must be one of that. So totally we have this at the most this number. Now we use uh, a to that is n times uh, n and n big S, right? So that is uh, incremental polynomial. Okay, so that's our first result. Uh, the second result is okay. So the Cohen's approach is quite very nice. So we have a, a simple case. Now you have very one vertex. If you remove that vertex, the graph is in P. Okay. Why we do generalize that? We have a set of Z that's more than one has T vertices. But now the condition is very, very strange. Not just C, we see G minus Z is in P. Okay, that's not good enough. What we want to see, the requirement is every forbidden graph of G contains Z. And this implies that G minus Z is in P. All right? But this is far stronger. And the requirement when T equals 1. Right? But in general, that's different. And our requirement is far stronger. And it's exactly this. Condition gives us the following result. So, if the problem can be solved in polytotal, if and only if for some t, for some constant t, the problem can be solved in polytotal. Okay? This condition is very strong. And that's, let's say, example, codographs. So, I hope everybody knows what's codograph. So, basically, no holes, cycles of induced cycles of four larger. So, the the structure of that is very simple. So if you have uh, so basically the now we take the t to be three, so we have a set of z of three vertices. So every hole of g contains that three vertices. Okay. So we write this. So so 
it says that if you have three releases, like so, everything else is basically just a component. That's the whole graph. That's it. So, the proof is has four parts. The first one we see each component is of the of g minus z. Each component is adjacent to at least two vertices. If it's adjacent to only one, for example, if it, then this these vertices are not in any hole. We can just ignore them, right? Okay. So the second one, see, it's so if this they are already adjacent, then there cannot be such a component. Otherwise, there's such, this is a hole here, and does not involve this vertex. Does not satisfy our strong condition. That's exactly why we need the strong condition. Every hole contains both or all the three vertices. So if they are adjacent, there is no such a component. The third one is so there cannot be two components adjacent to the same pair. Then again, you have a hole avoiding this vertex. The last one is the most technical and hard to prove is you cannot have one component adjacent to all three. That takes a little bit hard to prove. Not that simple. But after this one, we basically we see actually each component is an integral graph. Once you have an integral graph, so basically the minimal solution is the separators here and the separators here, and has, so you have many member of separators. So the problem can be solved in linear time. As we showed, if this can be solved in linear time, the original problem can be solved in polytotal. And if it can polytotal, then it's incremental polytotal. A uh, vote for coda. That's a big question. Yeah. Did you did you reach the Takiyaki and the issue paper stop this year? Oh, so we can enable coda in poly. Yeah. And even your children, you can already find it in coda paper in the eighties. That maximum, the hereditary poly time is incremental. For for me, for me, for maximum. You may have a graph or a graph. If you have a graph and a hereditary property, then the polytime is equivalent. For any hereditary property, as long as the input is explicit, okay. then the polytime implies incremental. Oh, very nice. Thank you. So Thank you. What you did is just you run, that's exactly what you said. You run, mm -hmm. and uh, as long as you have new. You don't have new solution, then you keep continuing, and once you have a new solution, then mm -hmm. that is different from your already given set. Okay, thank you. So maybe we can discuss. Oh. So the, the the next line, this implies the, the same result for unity in tour because that this is kind of simple because now you have something like this. So if you require z to be uh, t to be six, so somehow it, it, they are gone. So now you are doing the same problem as Codor. So similarly, you can do the block graph. Uh, so let's finally come back to the easy ones. So remember in the result of Cohen, when, uh, the last result is if the speaker case can be done in polynomial time, the original problem can be in poly delay, right? So but the question is, which graph classes has that property can be done in poly time. So they didn't study that, but we tried to ask that. So we find a partial answer. That's so if if a graph class has that property, then the forbidden graph must contain something. This is called a star forest. Star forest means every uh, this is a forest and every tree is a star. Okay? So that forbidden graph has contains a star forest and a complement of a star forest. This is a necessary condition. We, we are not able to show it's sufficient, but we can check it's sufficient. So, and after that, we show this, and uh, quite a lot of graph classes have that property. So that means all of them can be enumerated in poly delay. So basically, all of them are simple ones. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, so the forest, that means acyclic graphs, all right? They, are, they can be done in poly delay, but they are very different from here. Because all of this, the, the forbidden graphs are finite. But the 
Five is the the forbidden gaps are infinite, including all the cycles, all the simple cycles, right? Uh, so we also have some result on that, but I didn't put it in the slides because the, the because the time limit. So the okay, thank you.